the markets rallied again today, kind of bouncing up off of yesterday's small loss with an even smaller gain today. Uh, so this is my last market outlook that I'll do here. I am out of town uh, for the uh, next couple of weeks. I won't be back until two weeks from yesterday. Uh, so, so this will be our mar last market outlook until October the 29th. There have been some questions I've been getting. I see on YouTube and, and on Twitter as well about our Black Friday sale. We are uh, having our Black Friday sale again like we always do uh, for, uh, for our uh, premium services um, associated on our, our subscriptions on our website. So uh, be aware of that coming up. Uh, that's coming up obviously in a couple of months towards the end of November, but just kind of be aware of that and answer some questions there. Um, obviously, I will be back well before that, a month before uh, Thanksgiving, um, but I will be out for the next couple of weeks. It didn't go so well last time I was gone uh, in Africa here at the, at the end of the summer um, there in July and August. Uh, I don't think we'll have a repeat of that, though there are some patterns I would suggest we are close to the end of this intermediate run um, it doesn't necessarily suggest that we're going to get a deep intermediate decline um, you know to the tune of 10% or, or close like we did there right in the end of uh, July beginning of August we actually almost had a 10% drop there so it doesn't necessarily suggest that but I'm going to show you what those patterns are uh, and kind of suggest okay like you know, what do we need to see over the next couple of weeks to for our best case scenario, which might not be, you know, that great of a scenario, but it's, you know, at least it's uh, it's a good grind to the upside. And then what, you know, what would change and what would signal us into, you know, the beginning of this intermediate decline, however long and however small that might be um, by the time we ultimately have that. So I don't think we'll be into that by the by the time I get back. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about some signals and talk about some things that I'm seeing uh, that would suggest the possibility of at best a grind higher and at worst the beginning of stages of what right now looks like would just be a kind of a minor uh, intermediate decline. So we'll take a look at uh, the breadth, we'll take a look at the rotations, uh, all the things that we typically look at that kind of are leaning me in that direction. And then we'll take a look at a trade idea today that a stock that's been in its own bear market for the last year or so, and that looks to be itself to be kind of coming out of it. So we'll talk about how to, in a surprising sector, no less, considering how things have been moving, working the last couple of days. So we'll talk about how to trade that. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. Before we get going too far, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, this icon here, the red subscribe button down below. Click the thumbs up icon to like our video. Comment on anything that stood out to you today. Uh, join our website at MarketScholars.com for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us here on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right, including our Market Outlook Live videos, where I take a look at old Market Outlook trades, see whether we should stay in them, get out of them. Uh, we've closed out a few of these over the past couple of uh, days in that class. We also put on today's trade before the market close. Come down to the bottom, click this heart, it opens up this tab, hit that like button there. Same thing here, click on this thumbs up icon, it opens up this tab. Uh, scroll down to today's Market Outlook, hit that like button there. Again, the more you do that, it helps get our content out to all of our followers on those platforms. That's why we always ask. Uh, so thank you to those who do that day in, day out. Those who don't, you can do it right now while you're watching with one or two really easy clicks. All right, let's start off taking a look at the market forecast with the uh, on the S&P 500. You can see the nice little bounce we had today coming off of yesterday's little tiny engulfing pattern there. Um, the intermediate line still in the upper reversal zone has been for this past week. Market sentiment line has now slowly crept up and crossed above the 80th percentile itself. Um, the momentum line, which was oversold uh, yesterday, but without the near-term line actually being in, uh, you know, below the 60th percentile, um, but was oversold, it was a good sign. We talked about this in our market outlook, or excuse me, in our in my directional options strategies class uh, with market scholars that it's actually a good sign that a pretty good chance that we won't get the drop on the near-term line down because it's already oversold without you know, being below 60. If it would have been below, say, 40 or at least below 50, then we'd be a little bit worried. Um, but that's actually a really good sign, especially if it was like a lot closer, if it was like, say, down below the fifth percentile. Um, so, but it bounced up, the momentum line bounced up. 
uh, today. The near-term line dropped, but just barely below the 50th percentile. So we're set up for you know, another near-term bound. This is day one below the 60th percentile. The momentum line's below it, but it's not very low. And, and most likely, we're going to get a bounce back up on this near term. It would have been better earlier today. The near term line was actually down below the 40th percentile. It was like down here. And the momentum line was like just, you know, similar to where we were yesterday. So we were actually set up for a really good short term bounce um, that that could have, you know, really set us up for a good week, week and a half, the week that I'm going to be gone, right? It would have set us up for a good bounce off of that. So we'll see, you know, how that plays out here. Uh, ultimately, by the time we get to, um, you know, the end of next week uh, when I'll ultimately be getting back the you know you can see the Nasdaq 100 looks very similar um, it's a little bit more bearish short-term sentiment that on the near-term line but the momentum line never did really get oversold so again you know no real significant concern here the day one of us being below uh, 60 on the near-term line the momentum line is barely oversold and now you can see the near-term line fell day two but it did not get below 20 and the momentum line is already crossing up above it. So good chance it will probably bounce off of this and continue to move higher as well um, and maintain the strong bullish posture as you can see both those indexes have. Very big bounce. So the Dow actually did uh, get down to extreme lows, but again, without the near-term line even getting below 60, it's not that big of a concern. And we see, you know, we see that today, a nice little bounce from extreme lows in the momentum line. and. And there we go. We're right back at it. The Russell 2000, this is the one that really had the big move. It's up more than uh, 1%, 1.5, about 1 and 2 thirds percent here. The intermediate line, which had not been uh, as bullish. We got these bull tags. Um, but then, like, at the beginning of this week here, right, uh, well, it was actually last week, last um, on October the 11th, it really kind of took off. And you can see over the last four days, the Russell has been really killing it. And today... And again, it reminds me of what happened back in over here, um, back here on this particular month. On July 10th, this move right here, after getting bear tags and kind of being sideways, uh, the, the NASDAQ 100 peaked right here. This is the day that the NASDAQ 100 peaked. Uh, from that point, XLK and XLK, they've all been underperforming in the broadening trade, right? Well, we had four days where the Russell 2000 just destroyed you know, the, 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 remember the NASDAQ itself, uh, when you looked at it here on July 10th, so over those four days, you can see we had dropped and we weren't going up anymore. The intermediate line had crossed below market sentiment, which is so bullish, and we really started to drop down. So something similar to what we're kind of seeing right here um, uh, on the S&P 500. Um, but we had a really good move, similar, not to the same extent, but kind of similar to what we're seeing here over the past four trading sessions, where the Russell 2000 has really taken off over the last four sessions and the NASDAQ 100 uh, kind of had one, um, you know, a couple of updates here, but now we are actually lower now than we were at the end uh, four sessions ago. Um, so, you know, a very big divergence between the uh, mega cap index, which is basically what the NASDAQ 100 is becoming. It's so heavily influenced by those magnificent seven companies and the uh, small cap index. And we've seen that before. We've seen that so many times where when they, we get a big divergence, that's typically a sign that the intermediate run that we're on is getting very mature, right? It doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna fall tomorrow or fall next week, but it just means that we're probably running out of gas in terms of how much more upside it actually has, right? If we are gonna go up, doesn't mean we can't go up, it just means the extent of the upside is a lot less than what it has been even to this point coming off of some of these lows that we've seen here uh, recently. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly chart and you can see uh, this is the other kind of red flag that we're seeing. We've seen, you know, when we've been kind of bullish like this, we had our big surge and then you can see the green line crosses the purple line We see, and, and we close the weekly candle so far this week. Um, I kind of I, I kind of think that this is Friday because I won't be here the next couple of days. But so far this week, you can see the Hakanyashi close is a pretty decent sized body after a couple smaller ones, and then um, and we're closing above the high of that body. But when you look at the actual candle itself, the actual candle is really small. We've seen this before. We've seen this happen lots of times before. Uh, just recently, we saw it happen over here, right where we were kind of. We had our surge, we've been kind of bullish, we've had some smaller bodies below the average, and then boom, we had this surge. 
Uh, we closed above the high, and if you look at that candle, um, you can see uh, it was also a smaller body, relatively speaking. 93 points, this one is 67 points. Uh, we saw it again over here on, on the uh, 325, 318, 325, as well as over here, um, excuse me, over here on July 24th, right, that, uh, uh, that week there. So if I were to look at the Hakanyashi candles, you can see a big body here, um, July 17th, July 24th. Uh, same thing over here, some bigger bodies. They all turn eventually into transition candles. So if you look at this 715 candle, you can see it was a pretty bearish candle. There's your transition candle. There's your transition candle. They all stayed above their 10 week exponential moving average um, and the eight week as well for that matter. Um, but but they came after this kind of candle. So, you know, again, you know, a drop down to 57, you know, 31 is not going to be that big of a deal. In fact, when you look at it like on a short term chart here, uh, 57.31 is like barely into the lower half of the four week range. So it's not that big of a deal, but you can see how we've seen this kind of pattern set up before where you've been converging, you get one last surge of the green line above the purple line, one last surge of the green line above the purple line, one last surge of the green line above the purple line, one last surge of the green line above the purple line, and then we get a transition Akinyashi candle next week which ends up being a bearish week down to the 10 week moving average. And then we get the red arrow, which is a cross below the 10 week moving average the week after that, the week after that, the week after that, right? So and now whether that will happen this go around or not remains to be seen, right? Who knows? Nothing's 100%. But we've seen this type of pattern before relatively recently. In fact, a couple of times this year already uh, and one just a you know a couple of months ago. If I take a look at the two line or the three green arrow charts you can see three green arrows across the board right so we're getting three that's a good sign uh, for the markets if you look at the two line versions of that uh, as was mentioned we're uh, well above moving averages nowhere close to the 17 though but we are in convergence we've already had our big macd peak and then big uh, macd histogram peak which means the macd peaked after that and then now we're probably not going to get higher peaks which means that every move after you know, it's going to be kind of this not very bullish before we converge again and we get back below the, the moving average in the MACD and, you know, and then we're kind of watching to see if we get below the 17 day um, moving average or not. If you take a look at some of these other oscillators, again, we're falling on this. Like we had gotten above 30 barely uh, on Monday, but then now we're falling again and we're already extremely low on the negative indicator. We should be a lot higher and I thought okay we're gonna catch up now we're gonna take off on this positive indicator um, but then the last couple of days you can see again not the kind of move we want to see uh, coming you know into like some of these patterns that we've seen before as I've shown you before on that weekly chart uh, looking at the RSI and the CCI they're not you know we're still above 60 on the RSI so this actually can keep going uh, over here to the right so we'll go to today there and this can also keep going for that matter over to the right. So I mean, these are nice little trends that we've been on here for a while. We're still bullish. We're nowhere near. See, the green box in the bottom doesn't come off until we get below minus 100, which obviously we're nowhere near that. Uh, and and you can see, actually, we're close to 70 again on the weekly uh, RSI uh, as we're still at bullish levels, clearly at bullish levels. And um, But again, for a move that kind of started here without a surge above 150, and now we are getting one. So again, it's kind of like what we've seen over here where you kind of get a surge above 200 at the end of a move. A surge above 200 at the end of a move. A surge above 200 potentially now, you know, well off the beginning. I don't know if it's going to be the end of the move, but we're definitely not at the beginning. We're not, this isn't the first or the second wave, right? So, so we've seen, again, we've seen this kind of pattern play out. Uh, looking at the um, Ichimoku cloud, you can see we are mature level so we are above five and above 80 so that's actually a pretty good sign for that and then you can see on the bollinger bandwidth we are you know really pushing up against that upper band it's a lower it's a very very narrow bandwidth that's inside of the keltner channel still so it's not only a narrow bandwidth but it's also a pretty narrow keltner channel uh, as that momentum is actually declining and we have the red dots there uh, so we are in the kind of maybe a longer term coil um, with you know with that bandwidth as low as it is so we are setting ourselves up for a move uh, one way or the other to kind of break out uh, of this pattern 
If you take a look at the intraday chart, you see that as well. The range has really dropped off and it's going to drop off a little bit more. So like right now it's over here. The low point is going to get up to here. So your rune indicator, your red line is going to really jump up tomorrow. It's not going to jump up to 100 unless we get a new low, which is very unlikely. Um, but you can see like it pretty much will move the four week range up to last week's low. And the four week, the high is barely above last week's high. So, you know, we have a very, very tight range. We didn't get a new high today, and we'll kind of watch that green line to see if it ultimately drops below 70. Um, but we are very susceptible. We are coiling. And whenever you coil, you are very susceptible uh, to a breakout in the wrong direction just because it's so much easier now than it was, um, you know, just for visualization's sake. It's so much easier now than it was here. Um, you know, just a little bit ago because we moved the look how much this channel has moved up. We've moved up so much from here to here and we haven't really gone up very much on the high point to the compensate. And so as a result, you know, we've really dropped down from what was a really big four week range to a much smaller. We popped up again a little bit, but now we're really, really extremely low uh, on this range. Now, if you take a look at, you know, the volumes today and the um, trading uh, volumes in the uh, trading range, both very small, very small trading range, very, very low volumes. So it's, of course, it's going to bring the averages down. There's your average volume levels there. Um, they're already really low, so we can't really go much lower. But the, the ATR can go a lot lower right before it gets to an extreme, which is that 80% mark. We're at, we're bare, but we are below 1%, so that's a good sign uh, for the markets to be so below 1%. Uh, what's not necessarily a good sign is that volatility index still. We're still close to 20. We're still above 95%. The VVIX is still above 110. The SKU, if we bring up the SKU here, the SKU is still up close to 160. It jumped up, you can see today, jumping up to almost 160 again. So when you look at the SKU on the chart, it's still very, very high. It dipped down to 150, which is, you know, 150 is the extreme. It dipped down to 153, um, but it's back up to 159 again. The average itself is at all time highs. Uh, again, the, the SKU and the VIX, you know, and the VVIX are all um, just, you know, holding up and still showing signs of, um, you know, just a little bit of concern in the markets over, you know, what may happen over the next three weeks, considering that we have, you know, a jobs number coming up. Uh, right before the election, the election itself, the earnings season that we're going to be going through right now, you know, how much um, our earnings are going to rise, especially in these AI industries that we've been pulling forward so much price action on. Uh, so we're going to be able to maintain that so that technology and NVIDIA can continue to lead this market. So there's a lot on the plate. Inflation data that's expected to be weak um, uh, coming up after the election. Uh, so that's why, hence the volatility is so high and why what's keeping kind of a lid on the market from being able, and aside from the fact that the market itself is in a very mature intermediate stage, uh, very mature from a, um, from a, um, uh, from as you'll see here in a minute, from a breadth standpoint. Um, so it's kind of, all of this is kind of keeping a lid on the potential uh, for the markets to continue to really extend higher instead of just at best, just kind of grinding its way with small moves and small gains to the upside. All right, now let's take a look at what's driving this price action. So let's take a look at uh, just today and then we'll zoom out to, uh, to the week uh, so far. Um, so we'll come here to just today first. Uh, and we'll go to this five minute chart and you can see again, commodity is still lagging, you know, still the biggest underperformer. Didn't go down very much on an absolute basis, but lagging behind everything else. Look at that big move higher in IWM. Huge move to the upside. Not nearly as big of a move on the Qs, which is a little bit of a red flag uh, for today's move. Gold is doing well, uh, which is also a little bit of a red flag. And bonds are doing well, which is not, and the dollar. So yeah, yeah in fact, you had all three safety trades, include, real estate too, if you include that, but all three safety trades, the dollar, gold, and bonds all uh, above, all outperforming the Qs. Uh, not only above zero, but outperforming the Qs as well. Uh, emerging markets doing okay. Again, you know, you wonder a little bit without the lack of commodities, usually those two kind of go hand in hand. And when they don't, it makes you question a little bit. In this case, the in one or the other, right? Either commodities are artificially lower or emerging markets made a little bit of move. And again, that big move 
we've seen IWM make big moves um, without uh, the cues, right? And, and generally that happens towards the end of these intermediate declines, famously in November, right? Or excuse me, in July. Uh, the last time I really saw that uh, was after the cues peaked on July the 10th, uh, right? Remember the cues peaked on July the 10th, so that would be right uh, here. Um, the last well, the 1% gain to the upside. The next day it dropped 2% and then was down over the next few days, another week or so, uh, down another 3% there. IWM, on the other hand, on July 11th, uh, right here. So again, the same day that the Qs dropped 2%, IWM rallied 3% and then rallied again for the next week uh, while uh, the Qs were dropping. And, and again, we know what happened. That ultimately led to the intermediate decline. So I'm not necessarily too gung-ho about that move. In fact, when you look at the uh, ratio chart here, you look at the ratio chart of the Q's uh, relative to IWM. Remember, it's been flirting. There's copper relative to gold. That's not a breakdown we like to see because, again, this is associated with risk appetite. That's not the kind of uh, breakdown we want to see there. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the Q's relative to IWM, again, that's a big break, right? We had broken below the 200 day moving average yesterday. Today, we followed up even more. That's a big breakdown. Again, this is typically positively correlated with the risk appetite, so with the S&P. So we don't necessarily want to see that. You can see the long term. The PPO is negative again, um, the intermediate PPO, but the long term is also, the histogram has gone negative as it's crossed back below after a short little move higher. It's a big move on the CCI. Uh, you can see that the, the DMI is a crossover there, and then of course your RSI uh, breaking below 40 today. So. No, again, not the move. So again, something similar would be like looking at the high beta, S&P high beta relative to the low volatility stocks. And you see something similar. <coughs> Excuse me, we broke <coughs> below the 17 day moving average and now have held that. And again, not the risk appetite move you want to see. We don't want to see technology showing any signs of weakness, right? So it's like we came down to the eight day, we've seen this happen before, we came down to the eight day there, we came with a big move towards the eight day there, a big move towards the eight day there, one there. So we've seen these kind of moves. Uh, it would have been nice today if we had just bounced back up, but we kind of, we've seen bounces off of this too, very small moves you know, where we don't quite get above the range of the candle. Obviously we're not above the range of the candle today and we're susceptible, right? We're susceptible to the rotation of technology to start to rotate in the wrong direction, right? So there's XLK, XLC is already moving in the wrong direction, XLY is already moving, XLU, which has been tied to the technology through the AI trade, you know, the, the energy, uh, providing the energy needs for these technology companies, it's moving now. So, so it looks like that XLK is starting to rotate out of favor. And again, that's typically a sign that we've seen before. Again, there's your and July 10th peak right there, uh, and then we rolled over, right? And we had that big move on July 11th, very similar to what we got yesterday, right? And when we get that these kind of big candles like this, after a bullish trend, we get these big candles, kind of quasi-engulfing patterns on the ratio chart. Uh, we've seen what happens afterwards. It typically leads to a slide, and again, this ratio is also positively correlated with the S&P through you know, risk appetite and and it's not something we can see that, you know, like the, the beauty of um, of the IWM outperforming is it's a broad trade. Like the breadth is really good. We're at 400 with the number of stocks above the 200 day moving average. We're close to 400 on the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average. The number of new highs um, has been up to a de decently high level. It's not going to be 371. As you can see here, we're at 251 right now, but still. 251 is a pretty decent number. Uh, it's above the average. The average has been declining to 214. So we've had a nice little pop um, here in the last couple of days uh, on the breadth. Maybe too much of a pop, right? Because yesterday we were at, uh, which is correct, 294. So right over here. And then we're going to be down to 251, still up above um, the average. And But it's been a pop. And and you can even see it on the new highs and new lows. We really popped up close to 600 uh, yesterday, the last couple of days. Um, with the breadth already as 
um, as extreme and mature as it is, uh, when you look at the breadth um, here, so when you look at the breadth here and you see how extreme it already is, already close to a thousand, so it's not like we can turn up from here with new positive breadth and start a new bullish trend um, because we're already so extremely high and uh, we're lacking the money flow to support the move, right? The money flow is, is below bullish levels. It's not in the bearish territory yet, um, but it, it's out of the bullish level, territory levels. And so, you know, we're not getting this nice, good bullish move. Uh, we had some good volume to support it initially. And since we peaked, which typically happens, uh, we start to, you know, grind lower. In fact, this ends up being, you know, a divergent peak right now because obviously we got easily higher highs on the index, but we got much lower highs so far because similar to, you know, other times that we peaked and diverged uh, on this index before eventually falling into the lower half of the chart. Uh, down there so so you can see the rotation it's not looking very positive and and you can you see that as well as was mentioned uh, in the technology sector you look at October uh, 16th um, and you can see uh, the underperformance of technology staples is down XLC is down there so that's you know it's usually discretionary that would be down there and it's barely outperforming and there's your broadening trade but only because we're on a day of decline, um, of risk off, essentially more so than risk on. Here's the week so far that was, and it's been pretty much since yesterday, especially the last two days. Let's just zoom out to the last two days here. Um, you can see that like, technology is down 2%, energy is down too, but you got your safety trades up here with with financials and, this, and your consumer stocks doing okay with materials there too. Uh, but your bigger leader, is, which is what you want to lead to the upside, is not leading. And it's hard for the markets to maintain bullishness, as you can see. Even with all these bullish sectors, it's hard for the market to maintain bullishness if the leader is going to start dragging it down. Eventually, it will drag all these others down too, uh, to below this black line. Maybe not the safety trades, um, but that's why they are what they are, right? Those safety trades hold their value much better as we've seen since that july 10th peak right if i were to go all the way back to the july 10th peak in technology uh, from that time going forward you can see how these sectors have held their value better during the declines xlk has outperformed during all these rallies but because of this decline here where we fell the most because of that decline there where it also fell the most and because of currently the little little tiny bit of decline we've had the last two days it's fallen the most so it falls the most whereas these sectors hold their value during the declines you, you know you see during this decline it was actually up not down but it was up same thing over here during that decline it actually went up to higher highs during this decline and and so again safety is is holding up well um, because they had been such underperformers going into this right if i were to go all the way back to the Halloween low points. It was actually, I think, the 30, the 27th, where we hit the low uh, last October. Uh, but you can kind of see here. Let me just put it to a daily chart. Uh, you can kind of see technology was kicking butt up to that July 10th peak, and all these other sectors down here, real estate and and uh, utilities, they were lagging so far behind, and now they're doing a big catch up trade, uh, while technology, you know, still is an outperformer. And some of these others have caught up too, and uh, communication services up there. But now they've really made a big catch-up trade here um, uh, to catch up while we've been going through some bouts of volatility. The nice thing is that, again, discretionary has actually held up. Consumer stocks have held up okay this week. Discretionary held, has held up okay this week. And that, you know, again, it kind of goes into our trade idea. All right, well, that brings us to our trade idea of the day. Let's take a look at Lululemon. Uh, you can see uh, it's got dark green shading and a green line on this market forecast chart, so that's nice, right? We're moving close to the 90th percentile, actually. So good move higher, the highest we've been in months on Lululemon. So very good move, good short-term sentiment move. The momentum line, second time it's been up here uh, since, this, you know, since the end of this decline. 10% uh, up above the moving average, which is 82nd percentile. So it's a pretty good number, not too oversold market sentiment, you know, cro crossing above out of the bullish territory for the first time in a while. So you can kind of see how the trend, you know, is kind of changing uh, for the stock. It's grinding higher here, if I can type in the right symbol. There we go. 
starting to grind higher. You can see a nice good uh, pattern, multiple transition candles, closing above all these highs. Uh, this week's uh, Hakanyashi close, obviously the actual close is 294, so it's actually a little bit higher. Um, but you can see the PPO is starting to rise from very low levels. That's a pretty decent sized candle down here. Uh, if you take a look at the three green arrow chart, obviously you have three green arrows. Have had three green arrows for about a week plus. Uh, pretty decent volume lately, above or slightly above average. We'll end up slightly above average today. Uh, if you look at the two line version of this chart, uh, we are below that 200 day still, but we are starting to fill in that gap between the 200 and the 50 day moving average. Solid base of support down below us there. Uh, if you start looking at some of these other oscillators like the DMI, uh, all these other oscillators are going to show some bullish patterns, right? You're above 35, above th well above 30 uh, and below 20, so your ADX is rising almost above 25 itself. Um, looking at the each, excuse me, the RSI and the CCI, you can see we're above 60 on the RSI, well above 100 on the CCI. In fact, if you look at the weekly CCI, we're easily crossing the 100 level on the weekly CCI for the first time again in months. So. You know the signal for a new trend to begin there. Uh, if you take a look at um, the uh, each, they see the um, the cloud, the Ichimoku cloud. Sorry, there it is. It's down here. There we go. So we are above the cloud now, right? We've been below the cloud for a long time. We're above the cloud. We have intermediate strength trend again. We haven't had for months, uh, so that's a good sign as well. Uh, looking at the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Channels, we are crossing above both the upper band and the upper Keltner Channel with the band itself also crossing up above the upper Keltner Channel. So very good bullish breakout move, again, that we haven't seen for a long, long time. Um, and we kind of did, we came, came close to it on the last kind of hurrah before earnings and then it's been down ever since. So it looks like we're starting to trend a little bit higher here. So what I decided to do was to do a bull put spread so sell that that 40 delta uh, buy one strike away it gives me about a um you know what a, a little, well more than a 30 percent return on risk ratio for a bull put spread um again we're usually looking for about 230 dollars on on a thou on a ten dollar wide spread like this we're getting 370 so a really good return on our risk uh, and i and i'm okay with being relatively more aggressive than normal because Again, this is you know more of a higher probability trade as it is. Uh, less return, uh, a little bit more risk, but I like the fact that our risk is actually less than normal. I right? normally put $1,000 here. We're putting less than that. So I like the less, the smaller risk and still get a pretty decent reward be, even with the smaller risk uh, and not have to worry about earnings announcement right? because earnings will be coming up after uh, the November expiration date. All right, well, that does it for today. You've heard from me now, now I want to hear from you. Is that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes it to our Market Outlook forum. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread, and let's keep this conversation going in between videos. Again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Join us at marketscholars.com for free. Follow and like us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Have a great rest of your week and uh, next couple of weeks, and we'll see everybody on October the 29th. All right, goodbye, everybody.